Hi chaps, John here at Microasis. I wanted to take an opportunity to show you something uh, a little bit special to us Brits. As the title of the video explains, it's all about the new Microasis Spitfire kit. It's a 124th profile micro scale replica of the Mark 1A Spitfire used extensively during the Battle of Britain in the summer of 1940. I think it's fair to say that most of us British aircraft enthusiasts are still quite rightly proud of the Spitfire. Of course because of its history throughout World War II, but also because it's still one of the most aesthetically pleasing aircraft. And to back up this claim, uh, there is still plenty of evidence of the Spitfire all around us with plaques, statues, roads and building names still associated with the aircraft. So here at Microaces, we wanted to produce a Spitfire kit. In fact, I think it could be grounds for treason if we didn't. Now we faced our first problem. The Spitfire was the only Allied aircraft to serve as a frontline fighter before, during and after World War II. And it went through an extensive development program with 24 marks and further variants that changed not only the performance, but also the overall look of the aircraft during its service span. We needed to pick a specific Spitfire from those different marks to base our Spitfire kit on. Actually, it, it wasn't that difficult. In my mind, the most iconic mark that established the Spitfire's reputation was the Mark I that flew in the Battle of Britain. This was really the first time the Spitfire had been used in mass aerial combat and its design as an intercepting dogfighter really shone through. By all accounts the Spitfire is a magnificent aircraft to fly, instilling confidence in the young airmen that flew it in the Battle of Britain. But importantly it also struck fear into those that had to fly against it. So, here we have the Microasis Mark 1A Spitfire. The beautiful proportions, elegant elliptical wing and tail, the domed canopy and the sleek fuselage all come through on this 124th scale kit. The model has a wingspan of 450mm, that's about 17 and 3 quarter inches, and it weighs 70 grams. With the AP05 brushless motor up front generating up to 90 grams of thrust, this gives the Microasis Spitfire a very realistic scale performance, even at this small size. The pilot sitting in the office here is none other than Eric Locke. You don't hear anything about Eric these days, but during the Battle of Britain, he was the highest scoring. British pilot. Like many true aces, he shot down multiple aircraft in single missions and really knew how to get the most out of the Spitfire. On the 5th of September 1940, flying this particular Spitfire, M3162, Eric got behind an enemy bomber and lit up his eight Browning machine guns. The Heinkel started to pour out smoke and the undercarriage legs dropped, indicating that he damaged the hydraulics. The bomber fell out of formation and started to lose altitude. Eric decided to follow it down, but as soon as he did, realised his mistake as his Spitfire was hit by rounds from an unseen enemy fighter escorting the bombers. But such were his reactions that Eric instantly hauled back on the controls and the Spitfire responded by immediately climbing fast out of the attack. The Messerschmitt 109 struggled to follow the Spitfire and stalled out of the climb. Eric saw his opportunity, stamped on the rudder, turning his aircraft like a dial in the air. The falling 109 appeared in the Spitfire gun sights and with one prolonged burst from those eight Brownings, the Messerschmitt exploded. There's a wealth of information on Eric and his Spitfire on the Microasis website. So if you're curious about the history of Eric or the Spitfire, I suggest you take a visit. So, let's take a look at the Microasis kit. The first important point 
is that it uses the same method of construction as the P51 Mustang and the Focke Wolf 190 that were released last year. If you've already built a kit from Micro Aces, then you'll know what to expect. However, there have been some improvements in this kit based on feedback from customers and reviewers alike but I'll explain a little more about that a little later on in the video. First out of the box is the assembly guide. As always, this should be used at every step of the build because it's important to follow each step in order. It's a bit like following a Lego manual or assembling a scale plastic kit. Everything is done in a particular order for a reason. Next, we have the Depron Aero sheets. All of the parts have been cut, so all you need to do is pop out the required part when it's needed in the assembly sequence. There are three sheets for the Spitfire, plus a grey Depron sheet that has the wheels cut into it. The stickers come in four sheets of very high quality printed graphics. The artwork is produced in-house by Micro Aces and is intricately researched to ensure every hatch, bulge and panel line is included. Now, you may not see that intricate detail when the aircraft is buzzing around the park, but all the graphical elements combine to provide a much more three-dimensional visual effect and really steps up the level of realism of the model in the air. On static display, I think the model has a real presence about it and that attention to detail can be studied at close quarters. Now, this stick material is a revelation in itself. It's a special formula plastic that's only 50 microns thick and it's aerated, making it very lightweight. It's dimensionally stable too. This means it doesn't stretch or distort. This makes it easier to handle during the assembly process and importantly adds an incredible strength and durability to the kit, making the resulting model extremely crash resistant. The rest of the kit consists of the plastic parts, including a receiver clip that allows you to install and remove your receiver easily so you can share it amongst your Micro Aces aircraft, a wing brace that ensures the correct level of dehedral in the wings, and many more bits and pieces essential to the build. There's a sub-micro servo to take care of the aileron control, and in the deluxe version of the kit, you also get a very powerful brushless motor for one cell operation and a matched speed controller already wired up for plugging into your receiver brick. There's a whole host of wire parts that have a number of functions, including rudder and elevator control, undercarriage and tailwheel, and a number of pieces of carbon fibre pre-cut to add masses more strength to the airframe. The attention to detail is not lost here either, as the tailwheel wire, for example, has been shaped to the dimensions of the full-scale component. You also get this rather nice detailed piece of aviation art included in the kit, ready for framing. It's N3162, flown by Eric Locke, of course, and in fact, it's part of the exact same artwork that's used to create the stickers for the kit. Also in the box is a genuine GWS 5030 prop uh, with a Micro Oasis design friction fit prop adapter to hold it onto the motor and a scale spinner that can be painted or coloured using acrylics, marker pens, that sort of thing. It's a spongy material that's as light as polystyrene but much more elastic to absorb shock and then return to shape. Now I mentioned earlier that there have been a number of changes and improvements in the design of the Microasis kit. Uh, many of them as a result of feedback from customers and reviewers such as the guys at Flight Test. The first change to mention is that now there is a 45 degree chamfer guide and sanding stick supplied in the box. You basically use these two tools to create a very accurate hinge joint on the leading edge of all of the control surfaces. The next improvement also centres around the control surfaces. There are now tabs attached to the upper surface stickers that tuck under 
the control surface components and stop the stickers lifting off the 45 degree slope. There's also been improvements to the rudder hinge too. Um, it's been reduced in thickness, uh, giving it a greater degree of flex, so it has a, a, a greater movement and also better centering. All these tweaks have been done to improve the responsiveness of the model in the air and of course provide a better building experience too. As with other Micro Aces kits, the Spitfire comes in two versions, Standard and Deluxe. The Deluxe comes with the brushed motor and electronic speed controller, and the Standard comes without. The reason for having the Standard kit in the first place is that if you already have the recommended motor and speed controller in your spare parts box, or already have a Micro Aces kit, you can use these components to complete the new kit. It should take on average six to seven hours to complete and be a pleasurable, rewarding and very different building experience. And you don't need to be an experienced builder either and you don't need a dedicated building area. Micro Aces kits are designed to be built at the kitchen table with just a few tools. When you've finished you should have a great little Spitfire with detachable undercarriage and plenty of scale de detail. Now for the bit in the video that we've actually all been waiting for, what it actually performs like in the air. With the undercarriage attached, find a smooth surface or a patch of short grass and you can experience the swing of the Spitfire as you throttle up for takeoff. This is one of the idiosyncrasies of the real Spitfire that the pilots of the time had to deal with. With that powerful 12-cylinder Rolls-Royce Merlin engine up front and the narrow undercarriage, the Spitfire was prone to little swing on takeoff and liberal use of the rudder was recommended. The model needs little encouragement to get airborne and the lightest touch on the sticks to control in the air. Landings are a real treat when you get them right too but don't worry about damaging the aircraft if you don't get it spot on first time. The Micro Aces airframe is designed to absorb plenty of punishment, so you've got lots of practice chances to perfect those approaches. With undercarriage removed, you can launch it by simply tossing it gently into the air from an underarm throw holding either side of the canopy. Once airborne, the Spitfire gains altitude quickly. Loops can be performed from level flight and all manner of aerobatics that you would expect of a World War II fighter can be performed with the Micro Aces Spitfire. Let's look at an aileron induced roll for instance. Like the real Spitfire, this model needs to be barrel rolled, entering into the manoeuvre by bringing the nose up and inverting the aircraft up and over back to a normal flying position. The model also performs well at lower speeds and by coordinating your controls you can really impress with those detailed graphics and low and slow passes in front of the crowd. Well that about covers the basics on the Spitfire kit. Uh, if you're interested in the history of this particular aircraft and the pilot Eric Locke who flew it, there's a lot more information on the Micro Aces website, so go and visit the Spitfire product page, that's got all the details on there. Um, you can buy the aircraft there too, um, we distribute worldwide, so don't worry if you're not in the UK. Um, don't forget you can also go and like us on our Micro Aces Facebook page where we explore aviation history and we also post up uh, images of, uh, of kits, videos of, of kits and uh, also uh, stuff we're prototyping too. There's also a Micro Aces newsletter you can sign up for. It contains pro news, um, offers and new product announcements and you can also sign up for it via the website or the Facebook page. Well, that's it from me. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.